we're just going to be working through examples. I've uh, got examples in this screencast and then also in a subsequent one. So to start us off, what I'm talking about here really only pertains to subroutines. We're not going to be using the same type of stuff in functions. User-defined functions never use input boxes or message boxes, and they don't use active cells nor selection. Instead, they use range objects as the arguments to the function or just simple uh, numbers. So in subroutines, there's a couple different ways that you can normally get information. So this is importing information into the VBA subroutine such that you can do calculations. We can do this through the use of an input box, the uh, active cell. So this is chosen before the sub is run, whatever the active cell is, we can use that value. We can use a selection or you can have a fixed range. As far as outputting things back to Excel, what do you do with the result? We can output things in a message box into an active cell, which is chosen before the sub is run. And we can also output stuff to a selection and we can output to a fixed range. So I've got an example here. I've got two examples we're going to work through. How would you make a VBA sub that would take a value from an input box and A, display the square root in a message box, B, display the square root in the active cell, and C, display the square root in cell C3. So I'm real big on flowcharts. This flowchart is going to be very simple, but I wanted to just sort of introduce you guys to flowcharts. Whenever I'm making any sort of program, I make a flowchart to begin with. Flowcharts always start with an oval that says start, so that's where we begin. We then draw arrows into the different operations. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to get a number that I'm going to define as x. So we get x. Whenever we're interfacing with the user, we write this as sort of this parallelogram. So we get the x. This can either be in an input box or some other way. I also like to keep track of the things that we need to dim. So we're going to have to dim x, and that's going to be likely as a double. Next, we're going to calculate y, the square root of x. We also need to dim y then. Then we output y. That's we're interfacing with the user. So that's typically a parallelogram. And then we end. So this is a basic flowchart for this process. So let's go ahead and write the code for this. So in all three cases, we're going to take a value from an input box. That's going to be x. We're going to calculate the square root of x to calculate y. And then we're either going to display it in a message box, the active cell, or in cell C3. So I've named this cell square root. I write my dim statements for x and y, both as doubles. We obtain x in an input box. We calculate the square root of x and assign that to the variable y. And finally, we output the result y in a message box. The square root of your number is y. So let's run through this using f8. We obtain a number in the input box. I'll put in 7. We then take the square root. You can look down here in the locals window to make sure that it's uh, being, things are being calculated as expected, which they are. Uh, we output that in a message box. Now you notice all the sig figs we had is a double, so we had 15 or 16 significant figures. We can change that by using the format number uh, function. Now instead of just outputting y, I put format number y comma 2, which will truncate it to the hundredths place. And when we run it, I put in 7, and it truncates it to the hundredths place. The second part, b, is display the square root in the active cell. The only change we have to make here is instead of outputting in a message box, we output to the active cell, which here is, the, is b2. So everything else is the same, except we have active cell equals format number y2. So I can put my active cell wherever, and I run this using f5, enter a number 8, and it outputs it to the active cell. And finally, if we wanted to display the square root in cell C3, regardless of where the active cell is be when we start this subroutine, it'll always be placed in cell C3. We can just make a few modifications. We replace active cell with just range C3. So regardless of where the active cell is when we begin this sub, it'll place the answer uh, into cell C3. Okay, so we just completed example one. Now example two is similar, 
how would you make a VBA sub that would take the value in cell A1? So instead of us obtaining X from uh, an input box, we're just going to obtain it from the value in cell A1. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to display the square root in the message box, active cell, or C3. So instead of X being acquired in an input box, it's just going to be equal to range A1. So now when I run this, it's going to take 7, regardless of where my active cell is. It's going to always take range A1. So I run this, and it outputs it in a message box, or for part B, into the active cell. So I run that. My active cell is C5. So let's run that. Okay. And finally, in cell C3, which would be range C3. So that's regardless of where we start with the active cell, it'll place it always in uh, cell C3. So we run that and we place it there. All right, the next screencast is going to go through another couple of examples.